I'm trying to think of a great jingle that we can open on Earth Art Carnival with, like a little song, but uh, but I can't think of anything. I think it's, I think it's taken. Um, on Earth Art Carnival, it's the the subclasses part two came out. We love subclasses part one so much. Mm, we're Delicious. And now, and now the sequels come Di- out directly because of we liked it. Yeah, they looked say. at it and went, "Oh, these yeah. challenge raters like it. We got to do some more of these. Yeah. We got to leak it out to them early so they can get some ideas." Yeah, but then we were like, definitely. "No, we're, we only want to look at the fin- the finished product." And, as a, um, as, like, as social media manager, Neil, uh, that was definitely my doing. I, I stretched out to my contacts in Wizards. Yeah, of... my dad works for Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> <My dad. laughs> Shall we, uh, should we start talking about a sorcerer, maybe? Yeah, so we're only, this time we're only going to do one guy per vid, so, but they're going to be shorter, obviously. I think there might be a part three of this. Ooh. Oh, that's actually a fair point. Hot take. Do you think they're going to try and do all the classes? Um, I think so. Maybe. Probably. That'd be cool. Because it's called subclass. Yeah. It's not like fight a wizard monk. monk. Oh, God, that's, that's a fair point. That's true. That's a really oh, good point. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. Hey, my dad knows things, guys. Challenge rate is first, right here. This is why you. <laughs> this is why you subscribe to this channel. We have the hottest guesses going. <laughs> There's a divination wizard. <laughs> anyway, sorcerer. Right? Sorcerer. As we said of the last one, we really liked the last lot. Really cool. This one, as often with sequels, it's not not quite as good. We're not quite so. Sh- keen on it. It didn't capture the same essence of what made you fall in love with the first part of the Unearthed Arcana series. <laughs> the Unearthed Arcana subclasses part one. Exactly that one. <laughs> Clockwork Soul, basically you're a sorcerer who's, get you get your power from Mechanus, the the plane of like ultimate neutrality, I think is what Mechanus is, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that's, order. Yeah, or, or, order is um, the extreme. Is Sorcerers, obviously you get your subclass at level one because it's meant to be a big thing for you, like your sorceress origin, it's not like something that you choose or something it's, that happens because It's of... innate, generally, isn't it? Yeah, it, something it's something it's, thrust it's to upon do with you. your... Yeah, exactly. It's literally so... called your origin. Mm. Exactly, so it's going to be something that maybe your character is discovering as they go along anyway. It, it starts up with a cool idea, having like the manifestations of me- mechanists, so like, you have some connection to this, this plane of ultimate order and also constructs and like wheels and sp- explicitly mechanical stuff essentially yeah so it's like oh what's your manifestation and i think their examples are really lame before personally. we <laughs> before we get into like the kind of mehness of yeah. like the minutiae of the class i i feel like i think it's i think the idea is not bad because it agrees yes i, I, I think, think we should uh, i think we should deal with the modron in the room there's a the Modron <laughs> obsessed. Mo, we've, now, if you watch our other show, Challenge Raiders, I don't think we've ever mentioned Modrons because why in an we? episode. But I think we have. A, we might have at some point because it is definitely a common feeling amongst us that Modrons are terrible and maybe the worst monster. Play. We'll we'll get to it someday and maybe we'll love it. Um, but Mod- this is a class that loves Modrons because that's the only thing anyone knows about Mechanus is that there are Modrons there. Yeah. Um, that's the final thing. That's the big final thing is the Modron. The mo- su- Summon Modrons. Summon I- Horde of Modrons. When I look at like the first paragraph, or first few paragraphs in it, describing what it is, to me that yeah. instantly gives the idea of kind of like a counterbalance to like the wild sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. a completely un... Like, a lot of the sorcery stuff is like, it's this innate kind of untamed power yeah, that kind of yeah. unleashes itself and you're mm-hmm. kind of a conduit for it. Whereas this is more like the opposite of that. Which I think mm-hmm. is cool. I think having a sorcerer that is about like order, order and, and balance and, and, and law. I think and, it's, it, you're right. It's cool. And it's is a is a gap already. that is that is cool to have filled, but not maybe not so much by what this does. Yeah, I completely agree. I feel because we had we did talk a little bit that when we get into the minutia, each ability except the last one is like affect die roll changing percentage odds kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. which. Yeah in itself fits the class really well from a standing yeah. back point of view. But every time, I think all of us have read these individually and been like, that's all right. Yeah, like, oh, it's fine. But like, why does this have that? Or like, I I can think of another way that I like that. But I do really want to quickly look, because of what I've drawn, and you guys have seen what I've drawn yeah. more or less now. 
so their idea is for the manifest of manifestations of Mechanus. It's like, oh, big hovering cogwheels behind you. Or you've got clock eyes. <laughs> the clock <laughs> eyes are so bad. <laughs> or you can hear a, a clock ringing when you cast a spell. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's just like, they, 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 and even with the naming of it, they focused so hard on the clockwork aspect of it, which they did not need to. Because mm. obviously, like, clockwork and wheels and all, and contrast is a big thing about Macass, but like, if you're going for someone who is linked to an uh, idea of order and machines like that, you don't have to, you don't have to do cogs. That is really like specific, and I think they've like tied their hands a little bit with that by saying like, oh, you know, like a uh, uh, make your your features become angular. Like, okay, like you got you got like pointy cheekbones because you're a clock man. Cool. You look it's like just... a man from the techno union, <laughs> in Star Wars. Yes. Like I don't, yeah. I, for for the life of me, why isn't your heartbeat is like a a clock? One of them, for one thing. Like, why isn't on. it you have perfect posture? Yeah, yeah stuff like that. And, and, and I've drawn a man, as you can see, with a big rectangle like metal pillar for a head. <laughs> I love it. Which is, I think, on the extreme side. <laughs> I is love it, it. Is it. Is it a big grandfather <laughs> clock man? He's, he's just a big. He's, like, he's a one punch <laughs> man character. Let's be honest. It's, essentially, but like I, you know, because you're like essentially the. I don't know, like the avatar, the the uh, influencer from a, dif- a different plane, a plane of law. You're like a policeman in a way for uh, Mechanus on the material plane, trying to make sure everything's uh, in order. You know, that's that would be how I would see about playing it. So why not have something that's a little bit sort of intimidating in a sort of mechanical, faceless, emotionless kind of way. Mm. And the and I'll, one more thing before we go on to the the actual abilities, but because of that. Sorcerers are a charisma casting class. Yes, am I? I am correct in remembering yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, I don't know how. And high charisma can mean like a lot of things because obviously charisma is tied to intimidation. So like, I, I kind of consider uh, high charisma is not necessarily you're a smiley, snarky, hey, everyone loves you kind of guy, but it's like the strength of your personality, right? I, yeah, I think this is presence. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's just it's, it'd be a really hard one to role play like really high charisma, but guy who's like a potentially like an emotionless machine type thing. Well, that's the thing. I don't think that's quite what they're trying to go for. I think that they, what you're talking about describing is they're trying to have their cake and eat it as well because yeah, of yeah. the way that they talk. When you read the description, they're not talking like you're this guy you're drawing. They're talking like you're yeah, his yeah. descendant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I like guess that's a, a fragment of him is in you, and it's. I mean, it, yeah. it even says that like it's a lot of you know a lot of people in the field paint won't comprehend it. Yeah, yeah. If I was playing it, I wouldn't play it in the way you suggested, where like you're like a policeman coming from over. I think that's too because I, I, I I agree. I wouldn't know how to play that. A high level player party coming in as this guy at high level, perfect sense. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. A level one, this guy. I think it'd be really hard to do though. Like this whole class at level one, I walk. I agree. You're like. Because do you? I, I get, there's always with the sorcerers there is the self discovery. Like you can have it be a mystery to your character, like what their origin is. I mean, obviously the player knows, but the character might not. And this is like a it's a very weird. One. Anyway, we should probably talk about the abilities a bit because we haven't. Got I guess we. I guess we've got off it because there isn't. I don't think there's a load to say about. There's not lots of abilities. Say, the domain um, spells are all just like they're discovery spells. Yeah, and, they're bard spells, is what they are. Yeah, they're, they're discovery <laughs> spells and defensive spells. Like they're, I think they're all like uh, some of them are like divination. There's like alarm, arcane eye. There's like defensive ones like wall of force or Luke's sphere. Little counter spell in there. They're, they're all spells I can imagine somebody casting by raising their hand once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop it, this. It, they're they're yeah. spells that. That mm. makes sense, but there's nothing like super exciting. But again, they, they make sense, so like, you know, fine. Restore balance is the the level one feature thing. I quite like this one. Um, I like it as well for a level one ability to be able to cancel, you know, disadvantage or advantage as a reaction yeah, so, is so, useful, and it it works with the theming really well. Yeah, because it's like you know you, you're. Stopping the extreme disorder of of someone having advantage or disadvantage, depending, and you'll bring things to a balance. It's not really crazy. It's good neutrality. I like it. it yeah, it's it's, it's really it's, it's cool. And again, having that tied to, I think quite a lot of sorts of things are tied to the charisma modifier in terms yes. of like how many. I, I feel like that's a common theme. Yeah, it is. 
you compare this to again the wild one. That's mm. immediately something wild happens when you cast a spell. So this exactly. is like yeah. containing it. Yeah, oh, so that's okay. fun. Now their second thing at level six, Bulwark of Law. I don't get this one. I don't really know why this is here. But it's basically you use your sorcery points and then you make not temporary hit points exactly, but a buffer. You get like damage resistance. A basically. damage reduction. A damage reduction on two. Is it on? Is it only on yourself? Or is no, it's, it on, on, any, it's, on, it's, it's on, on any. It's on any creature. It's where you whatever you yeah. ward. And it's you know a certain number of d8s depending on how many sorcery points he spends. Casting it on yourself as a squishy caster. Yeah. That's a cool way of like actually yeah being able to move around in a fight potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, it's a fine ability, but like why does this sorcerer have it? Am I missing something, like, really obvious about, like, why? Because they say, like, a shimmering shield of orders. Like, that sounds like a paladin ability when you say it like that. I get you. Um, I get it's. I, th- I think, yeah, it, it. I think it's named weird as well. Yeah, I, I, I get I get where you're coming from. Like, it, 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 doesn't, it, it, does, it doesn't feel super attached to the concept. It's, it's, it's just, it's like, like, tangentially attached, almost. They, like, they have this idea for, like, abilities, like, yeah, it's fine, but, like, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think it's because it's like a mechanical defense almost, you know, like yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. being it's giving you a way to be tougher, like because if you're yeah, just this yeah. uh, this this guy who's got this power of order, you just get blown over. Yeah, and yeah. also I think can you you could just put like one on each of your party as well. As you spend, it doesn't say you can't only have it on one person. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, guess, it doesn't. So you, you could put like one on each, and then like and two it, on ev- you, and. Everyone's got a little little buff. That's actually out. pretty cool in like buffing the whole pot. But you're spending all your sorcery points. Yeah, mm. which are useful. And they're very like... useful. But, yeah. yeah, particularly for other effects that like when you cast like fireball on a guy, spells and... you can no, but you can like make areas of immunity, which kind of fits the class mm. more than doing this. Yes, yeah. it's, it's again, it's fine, but it's just odd. Trance of order. Trance of order level fourteen thing. Oh yeah, so this one means that you can't be people don't get advantage on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you get to treat anything below average as if it was slightly above average, which again is cool for for the class. It's I've... one of those things though. It's like yeah, you'd be like, oh, when should I like use this? Well, you can also get it back again by spending five sorcery points. Yeah, yeah. So th- this one's. I mean, at fourteen level, we have a few more sorcery points to play yeah. around with. You have fourteen. Yeah. But yeah, so this one, this one's cool, and it again fits the the theme of you know modifying, f- f- not not fate because that's another way of thinking about the dice rolls. But like you know, like bring bring things to like a base level because the fact the fact that it makes everything like a ten, I think is quite fun because yes, that is like this is the average, this is the neutral, yeah, like, straight. This is what it should yeah, be, yeah. And then it's it's literally the neutral roll, and then you plus your modifiers. So like, yeah, yeah. I also think at fourteenth level, like a lot of creatures have pretty nasty DC, so I don't see that it's a fair helping. Point, you. Actually, yeah. the, although I said that there are some monsters that have really bad abilities that the DC is low, <laughs> and if you fail it, good yeah, god. Yeah. So yeah. I think most more times than not that won't really help you. At most it will help you on a charisma save because you probably have a high enough natural charisma. Sure. And I think your... constitution. No, I don't remember what your other one is for a sorcerer. Charisma and. Oof. Probably like dexterity. Prob- probably, probably dexterity, con, maybe it? dex. Yeah, I think one of those two. Yeah, it will also help with stuff that potentially is um, maybe not in combat. Like if you're doing a charisma check, you can't crit fail. Yeah, that, that might be worth this. And again, because it only lasts a minute, so outside of combat, you're likely to get maybe like one or two things out of it at best, yeah. depending on how your DM feels about it. I think what it will, what I do say is about that as well is that if charisma is one of your trains saved saves. Charisma tends to be what you're saving against things like getting charmed and stuff, yes. which are some of the nastier ones. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it's good, uh, it, so, so that it would could be help great. Obviously, if you're that. trained in it, you could be getting, like, a plus. Yeah. Yeah. If you like a, end up having, like, a natural, like, nine and you're saving throw for it, or eight. Like, and, like, if you're fighting, well. like, vampire lord and stuff, like, a lot of high-level monsters, I'm thinking, do are the ones that tend to have things like charms. Dominate and, person and, and stuff. Dominate persons and stuff. I yeah. just remembered something. Yeah. That this is basically the rogue's reliable talent that they get at about the same level as this if you're a thief. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You yeah. get that on like dex checks and stuff like that. So mm. if you if you've like leveled up and you're picking like expertise and things from like feats, yeah. You could actually have like plus eight or ten to these <laughs> stats. That's true. 
That could be pretty good. good. This might I, also I be a character as well where you take, um, what's that, up, st- uh, durable? Is that what Durable, you... yeah. Where well, you could take another, uh, so, yeah, I think it is durable. Yeah, you, so you could yeah. take wisdom as well. Yeah, train another same thing. That would actually be pretty good, because then you'd have, like, charisma and wisdom are, like, the you'd ones have that you'd to have. What, proficiency <laughs> bonus at level 14, plus, like, a plus one or plus two modifier? That's, like, a 16, easy. Like, pass, yeah, see, if that got, passes if got, like, a 20, lot of saves. And yeah, if you've got 20 charisma, then you... And then plus proficiency, which would it'd be, yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. It's not going to save you I, from I, a dragon's breath. No. <laughs> and if you're fighting a lot of minions that, for whatever reason, have something that requires a pass, like ghouls, yeah. then it it might be worth. Yeah, exactly. So that might be be worth. I don't get the advantage thing either, though. Realistically, if you're if you're a guy getting advantaged against you, it's like a, a source. Yeah, you. Yeah, dark. exactly. And like, you've messed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I feel like it's one of those things where it's relatively rare, or like like it. it you're you're not gonna get hit more than like once or twice by something with advantage if you're yeah. sorcerer because you're gonna run away or not be there in the first place. You're not gonna get if you were a fighter, then maybe there'd be a situation where you're fighting like four guys at once who all have advantage on you because they're all flanking you, and then that would be really good. But again, a sorcerer should not be in the position. It's just a little tacked on. I thing, guess. I, I guess can we talk about it. Also works on attack rolls, which I guess is good as well. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that so means if you're fighting, if you're fighting like um, you know, like yeah. super armored, a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, sorcerer spells are like. You attack someone. By level wrong. fourteen, your attack roll is going to be like plus ten. Yeah, so that's guaranteeing a lot of hits actually. So that's actually quite good, and I didn't realize that. I, I think I, tra- trans order is a good ability, unlike some other abilities we, that wait, we could talk what are you about. about? What's wrong like with? clockwork cavalcade. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? We, do, to, we, we talk about don't like, I do march of the merlins. You you summon a horde. A thirty foot cube, which is massive, a thirty cube of Modrons or other constructs. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Come, I guess come out of you. You open up your coat and they spill out. Yeah, which yeah. is f- it's funny, but like <laughs> what? And like, I just, love the flavor also, of but, this but though. It, like, but it's also it's not Modrons; it's spirits of Modrons. They're intangible Modron ghosts that run out and can do three things. <laughs> Imagine, anything in the area. Imagine, 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 you know, the, you know, the ghost army from Lord of the Rings, but they are Modrons instead. Modrons, and, and, they, they and they're hell bent on repairing and, stuff. And, and, and they, they have and, to fix things. And they do it in six <laughs> seconds and then leave. Okay, so there are three things. They can restore up to 100 hit points divided amongst, which is similar to, I think, I think it does all of them. That's heal. Oh, does it do all of them? It doesn't say choose one. It says create the, the following effect. Create the following effect. I think that must mean surely one of them. Oh, no, I guess not. Yeah, no, it's all of them. All right, okay, fine. So it does all of these things. It will heal 100 hit points divided. That's, that's good. That's heal, I believe, is the spell. Yeah, that's no, that's right. It is heal, isn't it? And any damaged objects entirely in the cube are repaired. That's okay. Okay, like, Fine. make uh, make sure. sure. You've got a very and damaged then, boat or wagon and you use your 18th your level, level yeah, okay, to, okay. to plug the hole. <laughs> I mean, it, it could it's be cool. useful. It, again, it has to be completely within the cube. And then the last thing is really weird. Every spell of 6th level or lower ends on creatures and objects of your choice in the cube. Which is good. That's like it's very it's good. Cool. Yeah. But just like... It's like Dominate is, Monster, what? I think. Like, yeah, that, I think that'll yeah, we'll give it that. But what is that? Why do Modrons run out and do that? They How fix are up they your brain. It? They run out I, and they've got their I, I've, I've read Modron. I know what the Modron can do in the Monster Manual, and it can't do any of this. It has a spear, and that's <laughs> yeah, but these, but these are these are the spirits of Modron's spear. <laughs> Why are they so much better? Oh, um, they've been out to spend e- f- eternity learning. So, so out of everything, out, no, but physically out of everything this class has, this has the most flavour to it of Modrons and everything because it has a Modrons in it, and it like fi- <laughs> and it like fixes oh. stuff, and that's cool. And another thing I do really like, which we've noticed, I think last week in subclasses as well, with like the genie ability. Is yeah. that a lot of these final abilities aren't just finish on long rest? You can spend some resource like money to get it back. You can or keep source through points to get it yeah. again, which I think is so much better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So seven sorcery points is a lot, but mm-hmm. again, a hundred hit points is which is which is basically what it's either hundred hit points or you're using it to to end a, a really bad spell. That's what yep. it is. Um, hundred hit points is is good. You can do it two turns in a row. 
What I, yeah, you what could. I will say is like 18th level 100 hit points is going to be very nice, but it's not going to change. It, it, I mean, it could change things in a dire could, moment. You could, do it, you could do it three turns in a row. I hope you know that because it's level 18, you could multi-class two levels of fighter and do it twice <laughs> in the same round. You could no, do sure. that, which is like, which could turn the tide yeah, of a it, bad it, battle. It, it does say it does not say that you can only do it once per turn. So yeah, I guess you could. Um, all the motion also... swarm out, fix everything, and then you just action and, and... search, and all they flood out again. <laughs> ending every ending every spell of your choice, not not necessarily friendly spells of sixth level or lower, is very good because yeah. sixth level spells are pretty nasty, and everything below that can be bad. Uh, I'm gonna come so and just, say just it. This is multiple spells is great. Despite us not liking it very well, it's flavorful and kind of fun, but we don't really like it. This is one of the best 18th level abilities out of any class ever. Like heals a hundred hit points, does this. You can reset, it, ends effects. A lot of them are lame. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hundred percent true. So what you're saying here is it's actually great, and the Mojons are awesome. Uh, what well, is strong, isn't it? But it doesn't mean it's good. It, it's, it's very That's powerful. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah. And again, like if you think of the amount of liches you could fit in a thirty foot cube, or who could have various spells going on and making them stronger, and end it all those in one turn, mm, that'd be very good. But. Like, but that's not going to happen, is it? I, I would love it if it was more a portal show and a bunch of Modrons show up. You you were saying earlier it would be nice to have like a way to have a familiar who was like a construct, like a Modron. I think that would also be cool. To, I think that's uh, kind of what you've have drawn. A, have a little winged Modron. Yeah. I, I actually really like the Modron design. I think they're terrible, but I like their designs a lot because they amuse me. Because um, it looks like Wallace and Gromit little dudes, yeah. I guess. I do yeah. like the art quite a bit that you've done. Um, I do as well. I, I want to play that guy, thing. honestly. But again, yeah, what I was saying, like, it has to be a high level thing, really, for him. I kind of want to see him in a party with the uh, paladin. Oh. Like, oh god, actually, Ooh. <laughs> the yeah, neutral party, the, yeah, the neutral order boys, because <laughs> they would be like, yeah, ideally we don't really want too much it, like interplanar mingling either, because that's too much chaos. But I, I have to be here to. Like... I'm an ambassador. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're on the same side. We're yeah. we uh, we're not well, uh, friends. Modrons are famously enemies of Slards, so <laughs> it's a it's a buddy cop film in the making. There, <laughs> don't make me send you back to your dimension, Mechanico. <laughs> <laughs> He's a loose cannon. <laughs> it hits him once, and he teleports back. Like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, okay. Going over this sorcerer, I liked mm. it more than I remembered liking it on my first read through but I really don't get bulwark of law I think that's a really wasted ability like it's it's boring it's it's fine it's boring I don't get it and I don't like clockwork cavalcade because I think it's dumb and it's weird <laughs> it's an alt in a in a it's, it's such a moba alt it is a, it is a moba <laughs> well, as, as fill the lane Bill. with modrons what, what I would have liked to have seen but it would be it'd be too too much like number tracking is a way of like having like I'm trying to think of a way to describe this that like isn't overly complicated. Um, it'd be great if instead of advantage you rolled two dice and got the average. That'd be cool. That could be cool. That'd or, be fun. Or, and, 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 like, like you need a calculator to play this guy. That would be amazing. An ability where like if someone rolls a one, that gives you a guaranteed Maybe not twenty, but like a nineteen, like the the I like it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then you and yeah. then replacing, to literally balancing out. I think that would be cool, but also would require a lot of like writing stuff down. Like, hey, everyone saw that one, right? I'm gonna bank this nineteen for later. That's kind of but, cool, though. I like the, the. I think that the the grave cleric or the death this, cleric, he yeah. can cancel crits. There's it's, someone who can. Yeah, yeah, so it's like... And I know, like, the Divination Wizard... The, yeah, the Divination Wizard as well has stuff like that, like rolling dice and then banking them for later. So I don't think it's, like, outside of the realm of reason no. to, to have something like that. I'm just trying to figure out how, like, strong got, it you is. You have lucky dice, don't you? I feel like this guy could have benefited from one of his abilities been, like, gaining proficiencies and, like, all of the mental abilities, almost, or something. Like, yeah. you're just naturally yeah. proficient with intellect abilities. Because remember, you're a charisma character, not an intellect character. Yeah, yeah, this this seems like it. Yeah, I think it's it's almost like hampered by the fact that it has to be a sorcerer. It's almost a wizard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Like, it would be cool, maybe if this was... Because you get your thing at level one. If this was a sorcerer who uses his intelligence instead of a charisma, I don't see why they couldn't do that. I actually really like that. You just swap it. You just say that yeah. this, this one sorcerer is Use, int. Uses int. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't see why that would be so so crazy. Yeah. It could be cool. It opens up like, like options for other subclasses as well, potentially. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that you didn't use the TikTok like, logo <laughs> on his, like... Chest. Oh, we would have got so many more ESO clicks. I have no idea what the TikTok logo even is. I imagine it's the words TikTok in like a font. It's not. Is it not? Oh. No. I'm not hip and down with the kids. Evidently. Evidently. And one last thing, I wish that your Modron had a fuse coming out of his head and you could chuck him like a bomb. <laughs> well, I didn't, wanna, <laughs> I didn't want to spend too long on the Modron because we've not done him in challenge race yet. I think this guy that I've drawn would make a good NPC potentially. Like I agree. A, like, st- like going after the party like, you. how many crits did you roll today? What? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. There was like, what's a crit? <laughs> we must bounce. Anyhow, um, we'll be back within a few days, hopefully, uh, to do, I don't know, either the Bard... College of Creation or the Cleric uh, Unity domain. So uh, check out that. Uh, subscribe if you want to see it and you haven't already. There's a Twitter. There's a Twitter. There's links Follow in the that. description. Click them all.